Hello, this is Lithium. So um, a lot of you have been requesting a live demo video of how I construct faces and how I basically get my anat anatomy structure. And initially I was going to do that and um, because there were plenty of other requests that were asking about how I color, how I do eyes, how do I do nose, and how, how do I stylize my, my works, and basically how do I bring everything together. And um, I decided that I'm not going to teach you how to do um, uh, anatomy, um, because first of all, I am shit at anatomy, okay? I am the last person you should ask about facial construction because I myself am learning day to day and I'm still really bad at it. And I pretty much depend on references nearly all the time. And I'm really working on being able to to draw without any reference, visual references and just be able to com uh, construct mentally. Um, so instead, I'm just going to show you so I have here a figure that I already um, drew out, just a basic form, and um, it looks relatively clean, but before that it was just rubbish and it took me uh, some time to to construct this. And it, it's just kind of a standard face. I have no actor reference whatsoever, so I haven't really figured out what I want to do yet, but maybe as we go by, um, I can probably decide who I would like to draw. So I think um, a lot of you are very curious about my setup, about what brushes I use and how, what's the opacity and everything. And honestly, it really depends on uh, your style and how you work. So uh, a little bit about my brushes is simply that I use um, kind of like a... It's, it's, it's softer than a... A normal line art brush because uh, I believe the standard one would be like that. Wait, sorry. Uh, well, they're almost the same actually. Yeah, I realized. So forget about that. Um, but uh, the reason why it, it's not so harsh and the reason is because I have this setting on which is the pen sensitivity to opacity. So basically how much pressure you put onto the pen is how much pigment that comes out. And I think because I'm the kind of person that goes over lines over and over and over and over again. And if you remove this, if you remove that option, it's going to turn like this and the lines become really harsh. So I know some artists like um, drawing really, really clean lines and I just, don't know how to do that and I decided to work my way around it by um, using a, uh, a line art brush that is uh, not so harsh on on my line so it's a bit more like using a pencil instead of a pen okay so enough rambling let's uh, start so I usually work on an A4 canvas so um, this in this time I'm using an A3 just to make it better so I can really really zoom in but normally I just use A4 because my computer can't handle anything higher than that. Um, so what I do is I usually take um, quite a, my line that tends to become quite thin over time and that's usually because I draw on such huge canvases and then I tend to draw really really zoomed in so it looks thick from this uh, view, but as um, as you go by and you zoom out, you realize that actually these lines are uh, pretty um, thin. Anyways, so yeah, um, this is literally my line art, so it's not clean. It's never clean. I think if you um, download an image, you'd, you'd see all the mess that I make. And normally I like starting with the eyebrows for some reason. I think it's just, I think it's just, you know, when you start a new composition and 
the tendency is a lot of people like to go with for the eyes, which I used to be the same thing as well, where I'm like, okay, the eyes are like the most fun and they're also the most important. But that's the thing. There's this kind of pressure uh, expecting from you to um, get the eyes right. And then you get discouraged when it's shit and not fun at all. <laughs> okay. Um, so thing about nose is... It took me really long to, uh, to to draw this nose from this kind of angle. And I realized it's simply because of this part here where I just couldn't get it right. Because I, I would tend to draw noses like, like that, quite straight. And it's not actually curving in and then out. And then you have um, the cleft of the, the mouth. So I, it, took, uh, it took me some time until I, I figured that out. And... Honestly, if you want to know how I learned this, is really by um, references and actually taking a reference and you trace over a reference. Because sometimes when you look at things, um, you don't actually understand uh, how it really works until you kind of experience it. And whereas when you actually um, put it over the... How do I say? When you, when you draw over it, then you start to understand how things works. I'm sorry, I'm so bad at like talking and drawing at the same time. Um, okay, eyes. A lot of people say they like my eyes. I think one thing that I repeatedly do in all my styles, especially, is that I like to draw... So in this case, this, this eye is quite big and it's just quite awake. Uh, but now I, I like to make them quite dropped and I kind of cut them in half like a straight line and I, I draw it out and then um, so here I add a little bit of a water line and then I do the same thing so important thing that I learned is never do one eye and finish it and then go to the next I always do what I do from one here I do to the other so I've just created the outline so now I'm going to do the same thing here whereas I'm building it and then I'm going to add the crease of the eyelid. And then as well underneath. Then you have that going on. So there's a little bit of a... So yeah, I need to adjust her, her eyes and make them a bit more droopy. Because that's normally how I like to draw my eyes. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm droopy and I barely can keep myself up awake on a regular basis. Um, how I draw pupils. Okay, so I just usually fill it in. I increase the brush size and then I just um, fill it in like that. I don't outline it in this case. And yeah, it's kind of a very standard, nothing relatively special. Okay, now I go to the lip. So I like to add some weight to the ends and then I thin it out and then I come to the bow and then I deepen it again and then I let it fade then I just like to draw the bow of the lip and then I'll just kind of leave it slightly blank because I normally let the paint when it comes to the painting part then I'll show you how I usually fill it up okay I think I'm going a bit too slow so I'm going to speed it up and not make it so clean so yeah, I'll do the ears. Okay, don't follow how I do ears. That's not actually how you do ears. And I'm honestly <laughs> just bullshitting here with my... Oops. Okay. Um, I think I'm just going to do some random person's face. No, I don't, I don't think I can think of anyone at the moment. Because this face is really standard and quite flat. And there's just no one I think distinctly so I'm probably going to this is exactly how I draw my hair in real illustrations it does look messy but that's really it I think usually once you put in the color it kind of um, gets taken in. And some. It's quite boring, this hairstyle. Oops. Okay. 
Uh, I do edit my hair like this. I don't, I don't actually redraw the whole thing and if it gets boring then I find another way to work around it. Sometimes I don't draw the outer side first because I want certain hairs to flick out and just overlap each other so it doesn't kind of um, look boring. Okay, that's funny. So this is why I think it's really important when you kind of know what you're planning to draw rather than you're drawing as you go sometimes because then this happens and then you start uh, deleting and undoing and erasing until you get something that you do like. Alternatively, I considered doing my old, like the typical way of how I paint with Photoshop. Um, I might do both in this case, because I think I'll just try to cut down some, I might either speed up or, or cut away uh, this video so that it's not too long and draggy. All right, okay, so create a new layer. Um, by the way, this is um, Clip Studio Paint if you're not aware. Um, it's a really, really good painting program. I'm pretty, if you use Psy Painter, this is like the upgraded version. And I would say this is like in between Photoshop and Psy Painter. And I'm not used to, cause I, the way I paint is very, very different than what most people uh, normally do. Whereas they, um, paint all in one layer and they just blend a lot of things together which is what I'm going to about to do now but in Photoshop they don't really have blending capabilities they do but it it's not as smooth and it's it doesn't that the blending is not as nice as what um, Clip Studio Paint or Psy or even Corel Painter has to offer but in this case um, because I have this uh, program now I, I've been switching and I've been trying to do new things so I start by just filling out the skin tone with, um, uh, let me just draw it out and paint it out. So this is the skin tone. And then I go to oil paint and I use the oil paint flat brush. Uh, that's usually what I do to fill in the shadows and the uh, how I render and define my uh, skin tones. Um, how do you know where to put shadows and where not to put. I think the easiest way uh, to explain this is think of it as if you are putting on makeup. I think that's just the, the simplest way. So um, taking a shadow, a shade, um, I'm using a very tip, I, this is like a palette that I've already set up myself. It's quite pink, it's mostly Caucasian skin. Um, so it is quite pink and quite fair. Um, if you're not sure how to build a um, color palette, there are just plenty. You can just Google skin tones and they have it for all types of skin types and uh, complexions and colors. So I'm just gonna stick with my default one for now, which I've created. And going back to the topic about um, thinking about makeup as the way of finding out where do you shade and where you don't. And so I, I let's say for the eyes, you have eyeshadow, right? and you'd put it underneath it. And then you'd have normally um, on the nose, and then you would contour around the jawline, and then you'd also contour below the nose. And then, um, of course you have your blush, where you would put it that way. And normally um, you want to contour the sides of your nose and behind it because this nose is overlapping the other side of the profile which means that there's a shadow being casted that's why you put a, a bit of a shadow over here and of course the hair strands because um you are it is kind of bouncing off the body uh, the body a bit off the face so you can add there and of course you have some in the ears and you kind of just go around the areas that you know are working and sometimes you can just pull it in and just put a big blotch sometimes it works too um, because this is a quite a lighter shade because they're about I use about five 
to six different um, levels of colors, tonal values rather. Um, you can go bigger and because as you go darker, you're going to concentrate in smaller areas. So I'm going to take the next brush and then I'm going to go about to the darkest areas of the face. Um, in advice to choosing your color palettes, if you're not going to, if you want to create your own, I think it's really important. Um, if you see this color wheel here, every time if you want to go like a shade darker, never go vertically down because what happens is you're going to get really dull colors and it will look murky and kind of uh, muted. Whereas if you want to go darker, I would say go diagonally. If you go diagonally, then you're going to get, because this is where the saturation is and this is where it's desaturated. And if you go down, if you can see this curve, you notice that it's actually a bit diagonal in the way. So you, you should try to pick things um, diagonally if you want to go darker and sometimes to add interest you can shift it slightly to a, a warmer so if you want to go more to the orange or you go to more to the reds but I love using cool colors so I will always slightly uh, change the color wheel more to the red side when doing um, skin tones or even I think anything for that matter And sometimes I like adding just a different, uh, I like adding blues as my form of highlights. And it's mostly because I don't like the colors being so consistently the same as in like just going shades darker and adding different um, colors because our body, if you think in theory, um, highlights come in blues and purples and greens and even um, yellows it's not necessarily purely white if that's when you want to go really realistic those are the pigments you have to consider whereas if you're going to do something more semi-realistic then it's not really necessary because you're not aiming for that level of detail and accuracy but in this case there are ways that you can just give it a bit of a touch to it and it adds something different but the, the danger of using blue compared to um, skin tones is that it can dull it out because can it will in, in if you know your color theories orange and blue would more or less cancel out and turn into a to a brown a brownish murky color so it's the same thing with this where if you're not really careful if you blend it too much into the whole of the body it's going to turn quite debt in the color anyways so now we're going to blend everything together so we're going to watercolor and I just click the first one opaque watercolor I all the settings are default because I'm just so bad at like there's a hundred things you can do to adjust it but I normally don't even know what I'm doing and I go back to this first one here so this is I, I color pick this one again and now I'm just going to make my brush really big and I'm going to blend everything in place and this is why I love using um, Corel uh, sorry clip studio paint so much because Photoshop does not necessarily have this blending capability as clip studio paint does and that's why I want to switch um, using this program instead for when I color skin but when it comes to hair and when it comes to um, clothes I still prefer using Photoshop and that's simply because I used to not have this program and I would just have to work with what I already you know uh, am dealing with and if we have time I will show you how I originally color things on Photoshop which is definitely more different from this is this is like it's it's a little bit Opa it's not as soft, it's a little bit rigid and it's quite blended, yes, but it, it lacks the softness that I normally have in my works. So now it's kind of more or less blended, but if I were you, don't try to blend everything. So it's good to have these areas where they're not touched 
So you can see the sharp ends here and here, and even at the chin. Whoops. Yeah. So maybe okay, I'll just smoothen that out. But you have you have this here. So I just color pick this and kind of fix it in place. Um, I still want certain areas to be really hard. And I want it to be quite defined because if it's too blended, then you're not going to have any contours and any shadows and everything just kind of looks flat. So I'll go back to my oil, oil paint brush using the oil paint flat brush. And now it's more about highlight and shadow. So I'm picking this as color again. And I'm just going again, thinking about like makeup. Um, now we're doing highlighting. So you would normally highlight the nose, especially the tip of the nose. And you would have it by the cheekbones as well. And a little bit here. And actually at the cleft of your mouth above it. And then we go back to the watercolor and just kind of blend it a little bit back. So it's not too harsh. And yeah. I'm quite content. So it's actually really, really fast. So I've just did that in probably about less than 10 minutes or or around there. It just it feels like it was just 10 minutes. But yeah, so I kind of more or less have what I want. And now it's um, it's more of which areas that I really want to define. So in this case, I want to define the nose more. So I'm going back to my really dark. So uh, I would use like kind of a pinkish, maybe. Um, no, I'm going to use something a bit more brown, perhaps. Okay, so I'm going to use the brown to really cast the shadow, but it does seem a bit harsh, so I might add some pinks, some a bit more red tones to make it not as harsh. And as well as the eyes, I do love um, having a prominent crease and the area below the eye as well. And then once again, you just blend it out just a little bit because I do like this sharp thing going on here, so I'm not going to touch that as well as here as well. So yeah, sometimes if you blend it, the problem with this blending is it, it blends so much that you lose the shadows it casts. So you can just pop it back in, use your oil paintbrush, and then go click this one again as well. For every time you blend, I would always recommend using the lightest tone because you're already putting a lot of dark colors in, and if you're going to blend it with a dark color, it's going to turn really, really dark. And it's also the direction. So if you paint on the dark to the light, it's going to spread out. But if you're going to paint from the light to the dark, it's going to take in. That's why it's good to brush out and also brush in so you have like a equal um, amount of shading without it looking too harsh. Using the oil paint brush I'll just simply go over the bow lightly on the upper lip. And then I go just in the middle and then I just flick it up. So basically this area is not being touched. Maybe here I'll just fill it up. And then I usually darken it and press it harder and harder to add more color in the middle or the, the mouth line and as well as the bow and over here. So that's as simple as how I do lips. It's really not that special. I think I'm quite content with the skin. So this is how I do skin tones in Clip Studio Paint. Um, I'm going to continue using this with the rest of the hair and then I'm going to show you how I do it with Photoshop. So I'm just going to save this. 
now I'm just going to finalize so certain details that I typically do. Um, we go back to the eyes. And just whiten it out. But it's not good to make it super white because normally our eyes are not actually that white. So what I like to do is I pick a red tone, maybe like this one, and just go at the waterline just below so it darkens it out. And I'll pick a slightly darker gray to go on the upper part of the eye so it's not that white. And I also want to do it at the crease. Yeah, and I'm using my default brush, the same brush that I use for my outlines. I'm doing the same thing here. Um, okay, so next is how do I do eyes? Oh my god, it's so simple. So I create a new layer. Um, just to make it visible to see how it works, let's just give her blue eyes so that you can really distinctly see like a kind of palish eye. So I, with the same brush I have, this this outline brush, right? It's sometimes I would reduce the opacity to maybe to 75 ish percent. That's 77, but normally just approximately that area. And I reduce this brush size and then I just go over like that just once, maybe even just a little bit to build some highlights. And that's it. That's literally how I do eyes. There's nothing remarkable about it. So there you go, that's how I do skin and eyes. Now we move on to the hair. On a new layer, hair, okay. Um, let's give her brownish, let's give her, let's give her ginger hair actually. Let's give her orange hair, because uh, it's easier for you to see. So um, I'm still using the same brush I used to outline my hair. I use it for everything, literally, it's not actually the smartest thing to do, but I'm just actually more comfortable and I think I'm just really lazy. Yeah, so actually I only use, when I first started out in Photoshop a year ago, I used one brush, literally. This is the only brush I used because there were just a hundred brushes and I just couldn't decide what I wanted to use. So um, I just ended up doing sticking with one because I was so scared to try everything else and it was just not working for me. So I decided uh, this will be my master brush. And when I say master brush, I mean master brush in everything, uh, in coloring, outlining, sketching, everything. And I just made it work. And this brush is literally what you see in my older um, artworks, especially if you don't see the skin style, but you see it in the older version, that's it. I just use one brush. Okay, so normally what I do in Photoshop is I just go over the hair or whatever um, part you wanna color. And then here I go to, I create a new, um, a masking layer. So you find it here. So this is the, the mask. You click it and you get this, this white blank canvas beside it, this thumbnail. And you have to understand masking is like adding and subtracting. It's, I use this as my form of er erasing things, but in case that I want to bring something back, I don't have to command Z or undo. And I just need to switch between um, white and black to add positive or negative. So if you switch the paintbrush to black and then you go around, you'll see that it's being erased. So that's pretty much it. And the reason why I also do this is because it retains um, the same brush type because normally when you click the eraser tool, it's just going to be really hard. Like, for example, I'm going to take the eraser tool right now and then I'm going to erase um, the hair, you're gonna see how sharp that line is. And it's like really, really um, dense. And I don't like, you can actually change the, the, the eraser um, brush to the same brush that I normally use, but to make life easier, I actually just use masking all the time because you can just add and subtract things. So in this case, I'm just going to go around the areas. Okay, so I'm more or less erased, and now I click X uh, as a shortcut key to switch 
between the two colors. So now I, I clicked X and now it's back to uh, black. So black erases and then white um, uh, returns the color. So now it's back on white and then you're going to, whoops, is it white? No, sorry, it's black, apparently. Yeah, so if you switch it to black, you get the colors back, which is strange. Normally it's the other way around, but I don't know what's happening with my Photoshop. It, anyway, it doesn't matter. As long, as long as you know, you just switch between black and white and you're just going to get positive and negative in return. So this is the part where I like adding strands, um, not just strictly following the outline. I don't normally, I, I, I've become so lazy to be super, super clean. Even in my final works, I'm not that clean. And it's usually because I draw in such a huge canvas, you don't really see it unless you really zoom in, then you're going to be like, holy shit, she's really, really messy. <laughs> so yeah, I just decided that I might, might as well embrace it and add it as part of my style and make sure that it just works rather than trying to be as precise and clean as possible. So yeah, and I'm just going to add some flyaway strands. Next is something that is what I do in all my artworks, which I've been doing a long time ago. And um, some of some people will say this is not really the right way of selecting colors, but this is just me being super lazy, is I create a new layer. I right click on it and then I go to clipping mask. So create clipping mask. This means that whatever I paint will only be within the area of my hair because it's being clipped below to my base. So to just make it really simple, let's just take the black so you can distinctly see. If I press really hard, it, it only stays within the area that I've painted below. So it's not going to go outside. But if you release the clipping mask, so if you go down and you release it, then there, you're going to have that. So this is just a really efficient way of shading without, um, you know, having to erase every single layer. So you clip a mask and then you can start. So what I do, which I usually do with my skin, <clears throat> that I'm going to show you um, probably later is, so I, I drop my, I get my base color again. I switch it to multiply. I reduce the opacity all the way down to maybe, depending on how dark your hair color is, I would say because this is an orange tone, it's going to be in the medium areas, I'm going to set it to about 40%. And now I'm going to just lightly brush in. So I think it's too harsh, so I'm going to reduce it to even lower. Yeah, so yeah. Then I'll just lightly go into the areas that I want to shade, so probably here. I don't really follow like very strictly what needs to be shaded and what not. And that's why all my works turn out really soft and there's no really distinct um, con high contrasting shadow, which can be a good and bad thing, but I usually just, it's simply because I'm still in a process where Shading is not my strong point, and I decided that I might as well work with something that I'm not very good at, that necessarily soft, by doing this in a really soft manner, yes, I don't generate really um, harsh shadows, but I make it as part of my style. Okay, and I uh, create a new layer, but this time I won't clip it because I'm going to set it to multiply, and this is more of just a stylizing thing, which I normally do with... Um, colored pencils in a traditional drawing. So I set it um, all the way up to 100%. It's on multiply. You're still using um, the base color. So this is the base color of the hair. So I've been using this one color. I have not changed at this point. So on the layer above the one that you've clipped, I'm going to reduce it all the way back to an almost out outline, the, the, the line art size of my brush. And then I'm just going to kind of shade certain areas and I can increase the size and this is really just a style thing like I just like uh, creating more strands of hair but instead of using a black I'm using um, the color and as you can see it's kind of making it's making a much darker color though still quite saturated and 
just a really effective way of if you're really ha struggling to f make your own color palette or you don't want to think about it, then this is just a really good method. So yeah, I do add really thin flyaway hairs to add some delicacy to it. And yeah, maybe, okay. I'll just add some eyebrows actually. So same brush, increase it and just lightly give her some eyebrows. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. That's how I make my hair and my skin. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I do skin the old way with not with Clip Studio Paint, but purely Photoshop. It's fundamentally the same thing. So I'm going to, but in this case, um, I'm not doing the skin in one layer. I do it in many layers, which honestly speaking makes me a layer freak, yes. <laughs> I'm the kind of insecure person that needs to create a layer for every single thing I do, which you should not do because um, it's highly discouraged and it, the more professional be, you become, um, the more confident you can be when uh, making your skin. But in this case, um, at the same time, because I work in this manner, it gives me a really interesting result. And this is why I have this really soft effect. So same thing, I'm going to create the base of my layer. Okay, it's as simple as this. You go to the next layer, the layer above, you go to, so these are my array of skin tones and I usually stop until this dark one here. This is another set of skin tones. So we're just gonna use one, two, three, four, five. So this is the base and then this is the, the mid tones. This is like the second mid tones. This is the shade and this is more of the shadow. Um, again, well, as you go, um, one shade down, even if it's really subtle, you slowly decrease the size, but um, when it's still very light, you want to take as much space as possible. And when I'm um, applying the color, I'm actually being quite light. I'm not really pressing super hard and I go over it several times and it builds. And same thing, um, I just go in the areas that you're supposed to shadow, uh, shade rather. And it's just like makeup. So you go over with the eyeshadows, under the eyes, on the nose, nose bridge. Of course your cheeks, I'm contouring and in here I'll just do my lips for the sake. On the chin, under the jawline and casting shadows from behind the hair. And don't forget the ears. I always forget the ears. And then go to the next layer and you just continue repeating, then you go one shade darker. And then you go, I'm still using the same brush. Cause I'm insecure as fuck and I'm too scared to explore at that point of time. So I just said, and fuck it, I'm going to use one brush for everything and I'm just going to make it work because I'm a pussy and I don't have the confidence to try other brushes out. But I would really highly encourage you to try your as many brushes because trust me, it will make your work so much better. And <clears throat> it took me a really long time. But what I do advise is baby steps. It's really how I learned to, to master my brush because I'm so familiar with this brush setting that I can pretty much do everything with it. And that's what I really love about how I'm um, manage to to work around with this brush. Then we go another layer and now we're going into the first shade and it's going to get quite dark. So what I actually do is I reduce the opacity to about say 65% and now you notice that I'm actually decreasing the brush size because now we're starting to go to only certain areas that we want to create um, a shadow. So in this case I want it Below the eyes, above the eyes, especially the nose, and then on the side here, and definitely underneath. You can definitely see the color choices are much more desaturated, and this is because this is my really old color palette. 
not like the other one that I use on Clip Studio Paint where it's definitely much more vibrant. But for now we'll just work with it and then I will show you what I do to enhance colors. And then we go to the shadow, the last one, which is the darkest. And I'm still at, six, I can guess go with 64%. Because anyway, as you go over it, it's going to become darker. And now I'm just going to certain areas. But it's the same technique, as you can see how I, well, almost the same technique because I'm not blending this in this case. I'm actually blending as I go. That's why I reduce the opacity to a much lower level because I told you Photoshop doesn't have as good as a blending capability. So um, the way I paint is I consider it like watercolor because in watercolor, when you want to build, you paint a base, you let it dry, and then you continue, you let it dry, you build, you build, you build until you get the depth and the contours and the, sh the form of the, the face a lot more um, defined that way. Whereas the Clip Studio Paint technique was more of a oil painting style, whereas you have the colors that are already fully opaque and then you just blend everything in. So I do know that most people prefer doing that version where they just blend everything in. But at that time, I did not have Clip Studio Paint. And I only had Photoshop and I just didn't know how to work around that method. It just didn't work for me at all because the blending wasn't so, wasn't really that good. So this is just, this is how I create um, such soft results. So now I'm going to add some blush because uh, her, she's really, has really dead skin. <laughs> she looks quite like me when I haven't gone and have a life basically so I go into the lower areas and the nose I'm going to reduce it to 30% I'm going to add some blush okay I realize that I think I'm yeah I was using the wrong brush this whole time no wonder <laughs> yeah actually I was using the wrong brush that's why you're starting to see it's not blending as smoothly, so I'm going to delete that and I'm going to try it again. Yeah, now I'm starting to see. Oh, that's hilarious. I've been painting on the wrong brush this whole time. But then, then again, that's just to prove that how you approach it is almost the same method because I'm more or less just painting with a really light opacity. That's giving me, I mean, it's almost giving me the same result, so... So yeah, if it's too harsh, so yeah, like this area is too harsh. So now we go back to masking. So I'm going to mask this and with the 20, I think I'm going to increase it to about 50% or 60%. I'm just going to lightly blend it away so it's a bit softer. Yeah. So yeah, that's, it's a bit messier than I normally do, but I, when I have more time, I would do this more meticulously and make sure that all the colors are blended much better. But it's really um, playing around with the opacity and then the amount of colors you keep pressing in. So we call this uh, soft blending rather than hard blending. So hard blending is when you put the colors and they're all sharp and then you use the blender to blend everything out. Whereas this, everything is already soft. So you're already blending as you go. So it's all about just building a lot of layers. So lips, exactly the same thing. I'm going to, but this time I'm going to increase the opacity to 100% because I want it to be quite saturated. But it's the same thing. I'd like to live, leave this um, little gap here. It's a lot softer, but I now I just masked it so that I can just shape it out nicely. And... Sometimes if I want to, because it does look quite flat, the lips, I just create a new layer and with the same thing with the hair, just click multiply. I reduce the opacity to maybe 40%. And then I add in just the shadows. It's usually towards the center and the upper lip, whereas when it comes to the bottom lip, I just go in the area and I leave these areas white and that's it. Yeah, so that's how I traditionally do skin. 
Now, um, detailing, um, I simply create a new layer and this is when your brushes come into, so I have like bloody a lot of brushes that I've downloaded. You can get them on DeviantArt. There's so many there available if you're, you don't have the default brushes and they have like all of it, like leaves and rocks details. Um, but I just set, so from this all the way down here are all the brushes that I do, not even all I use, maybe about three of them I use now. So um, here is a speckle brush. So I'll just click color, pick the hair color. And yeah, I just, it's already a pre-made brush to, it's more about, uh, you can use it for stars and just detail, but I use it to have freckles because why not? And I like the subtlety of it. It's not so harsh because you can simply go back to your, my default outline brush and just really small and you just lightly tap on certain areas to really bring it out. So now you have freckles, that's how you get it. Okay, now after, normally when I paint, um, and I have everything, I do think something called uh, adjustments, color adjustments. Again, some people argue this is cheating. I say, screw it. If it's there, it's there. I mean, it's there for a reason. So make use of it. I don't understand why you have to be considered cheating if you're going, if you're not going to use it. If you, But I mean, if you want to be authentic and you think if you can just, if you don't need to adjust your colors and you think you've created the shadows and the lighting just perfectly, then that's great. So... Uh, usually I do levels. So this is one neat trick that I always do in all of my artworks. And I decrease the the middle, this this arrow, or what do you call it, arrow, I guess. And I just decrease it quite a lot until you see it's quite dark. And then because it already creates um, a mask, so what's, what's the difference between going to image and then, uh, sorry, a layer? No, not image. Yes, image adjustments and levels. So when you do this, especially on the layer that you want to adjust, you are having it fixed in that point, which is, it means that when you change that, then that's it. What I like about the adjustments, this adjustments tab. So if you want to get it, you just go to view, uh, sorry, window and adjustments, and then you'll get this box here. And what I love about this is that you can toggle it on and off. See? So if you think it's not good and you're like, oh, no, it's not working out, you can just delete it without destroying your artwork. This is why I love this function so much because I can always recover um, my old works. So what I normally do is I get the paint bucket tool and I paint the whole thing black. So now my love, now this is all black. So there's no more levels being affected by it. And then switch it back to white and selecting my brush. I have my standard brush that I use to color. I'm going to increase it and I'm going to reduce the opacity to maybe 80% or even 70%. And now I'm going to further shade certain areas and I'm just enhancing and making it even more defined. And this is the, the best part is when you want to really let the shadows of your areas pop out and really, so like you, the contouring is much stronger, like so. Yeah, that's really it. And then I think, um, what else do I do? Um, on my outline layer, I create a new layer, like I, uh, I duplicate the layer of this outline. So that's outline two. And this is the first, oops. This is the first outline. And on the bottom outline, I go to um, the adjustments and, or the layer uh, setting, I think you call this. And I go to overlay. And what I do is I reduce, I go to the upper layer, which is still set on normal. So I have two copies 
And so one is on overlay and the one above, I'm going to reduce the opacity to about 80% or maybe 83%. And you can already see my outlines have reduced in color. I can even go further and you, now you're starting to see the eyes disappear. So I like to probably keep it at 80% is usually a nice number. And this is to make your outlines much softer, especially in the lighter area. So the skin, you don't see the outlines as prominently. And then with, whereas in the hair, it's a bit more darker and then you, you start to see, and it's not actually uh, black anymore. It's it's um, blending in with the orange. So if you really, I think if you zoom in, you can actually see that there. I think you can notice that this this hair right here is no longer black, but it's rather this really dark brown. So that's the ability of setting it to overlay. And it's just little tips like this can, that can really change the nature of your drawing. And do not be afraid to play around with the adjustments. So like in this case, maybe if her, uh, let's say the colors are not really the way you like it, you can go to color balance and then you can just add maybe a bit more blues and something more reds. So yeah. And uh, maybe not magenta, but keep it at zero, but just like that subtly and you change, it looks more warmer and more consistent in color. And you should really make use of this as much as you can. And you can even adjust the opacity of these things. If you think it's too harsh, what you've done, just reduce it. And I think that's all I have to share. Um, I hope that was insightful. I'm sorry if I ramble and I stutter, I'm not used to recording and explaining, and I'm very bad at doing two things at once. But um, that's literally how I do all of my artworks, pretty much. It's the same thing over and over again. This is the formula that I always do. So if you have any questions, or if you think about wanting to have another tutorial, um, I'm considering doing something more on visual versus mental referencing and what they mean because there's always this issue about is referencing good? Is it bad? Is it cheating? Is it not? And I think it's really important for people to understand the importance of referencing and how it, to use it and how not to use it. So I might do that. And if this has helped, then I'm so glad. Thank you. And just leave a like or reblog it or share it and that's all for now. Thank you.